Nick, good to see you again. Hello, Kevin. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you have been to our shop, and that was a great pleasure for us. And uh, now we're at yours, which is a real pleasure. That's, this is the that's real generous. Yeah. You've been here for a while. I've been in here about 16 years. Wow. All right. Big space. We can get a look around, maybe? Sure. Before you can make furniture, you need a piece of wood. So why don't we start with my wood stock? This is a surprise. <laughs> look at all of this wood. Yeah, it's a, we have a bit of a bit of stock. <laughs> Where did this all come from? A lot of it came from Northern California. I know a few different guys who only take felled trees or trees that come down for construction. And there's something incredibly magical about having a slab of a table where you can, you know, if you know your tree, you can, you can look at the end grain and count the rings. And so while you're having dinner, you have this, this cross section of mm. history, you know? You're, like, oh, this tree is 140 years old. So right about here was the, uh, you know, the invention of the automobile. Right. So you have got the stock. The inventory is all here. Uh, care showing me where you guys do your magic? Sure, yeah. There, there's a little more work uh, to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so once we've picked our wood out, then we bring it in here. And depending on what we're making with it, we begin to make it smaller and shorter and flatter. Uh, those big slabs, you know, if we're going to make just a table, then it's all about making it flat and stable. But uh, sometimes we, for example, if we want to make a big round table like this is going to be, uh, then we need to create planks to laminate together. And the way we do that is first you knock off the natural edges on a bandsaw, mm -hmm. and then you use the joiner and planer and table saw to carefully flatten and make square edges and, and surface them. I'm seeing a lot of older tools right here. Is this by necessity or is this by choice that you've picked this eclectic mix? I always try to find as old as I can because you've got the most cast iron parts and they're just kind of bulletproof. I mean, I've got this drill press from uh, 1943 and it's never required a lick of maintenance. Right. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Okay. And what lumber are you using here for this project? This is live oak. This came down here in Los Angeles and our friends milled it up. Yeah. And uh, live oak was, was a very popular naval wood because it grows in crooked ways that were actually ready made for ship parts. Sure. So there's a lot of work to get that flat and ready to be a table again. Which sort of begs the question, why wood? Wood is something we're able to shape with sharpened steel, yet it still is sturdy enough to, you know, you can, you can park a pickup truck on one of our tables. Um, right. And so ra rather than stone or glass, for my money, uh, wood is so friendly to work with. How does someone get started? Like, what do you suggest if they want to get into woodworking and get into their garage to do this? Well, it's, it's quite easy. Um, it's really just a, a dialed down version of all these machines. You know, these, uh, I, this is going to be a, a, a seven foot diameter massive dining table with, a, with an inlaid Lazy Susan. Mm. So that's a massive thick project. But if you dial that all the way back to say a tray or a cutting board that you would use to serve on this table, that's where you start. And it's the same set of steps. You need to make your wood flat and square and friendly um, with hand tools, which I can show you a little bit about. So as I mentioned, you know, you take a look at a chisel and it's just this beautiful sharpened wedge of steel. Mm. And, and with a chisel, you can, you can use it in a couple directions to have different effects. You know, you can pair and you can kind of carve. And every, every woodworking tool, you know, you take it, then you t look at a plane. The plane blade is just a wide chisel that's encased in this clever housing so that it, it does something much more specific. It takes a regular shaven. Every time. And that's, that's what really every hand tool is. You know, a, a saw is just a bunch of tiny chisels lined up so that they'll cut the, the wood fibers. Right. So when I get people started, um, I, I, I always suggest that uh, the less electricity you can use, the more pleasurable your woodworking will be because you don't have the noise and you don't have the dust and you don't have the expense of any power tools. So forego the power tools and stick with the hand tools. As much as possible. So I, I tell people to go to the lumber yard and talk, find somebody who knows the wood, 
you know, talk to them about their wood. And these are, these are some pieces of uh, big leaf maple from Oregon from a guy that I know. And there's some planks that I used in a workshop. And I just have my students cut off what looks like a nice size cutting board. And a cutting board is a great place to start because look, you've made one cut hmm. and that you're almost done. You strike, out, strike a line, it doesn't even have to be straight, but you can use it to teach yourself to cut a straight line. And I'm telling you, if you get, you get a Japanese pull saw, which cuts on the pull, or a classic Western crosscut saw, if you get one of these these days from, from the hardware store, they're nice and sharp, they last a long time, and you'll be amazed at how easy, if you take your time and slowly begin to use it, you can make a cut. Yeah. That alone will feel like a superpower. And then I just have people, there's different uh, sanding accessories you can get. This is a little wedge that takes hook and loop sanding discs. Mm -hmm. And this is like a little Nerf handled circle. And th these are great for our natural edge stuff because it's not flat, it allows you to get into all these contours. And then I just have them go to town and they usually work up a sweat because they get into it. You make all the edges nice, you clean it up as, as nice as you want, and then once you oil that, all this figure, all this color comes out, and they say, I'm a genius. <laughs> you know, this is just making a rectangle. Now, then you make four of those, and you start by putting them together maybe with dowels by drilling, but you know, then you go from a rectangle to a box, you go from a box to a set of drawers, right. and then you build a piano. And I guess, I mean, you tell the story of your humble beginnings of things when you were a little kid. You weren't doing anything on uh, band saws and jointers. No, I mean, that's something I love to, to uh, something I love to communicate about woodworking is that if you take a bucket of nails and slap together a bunch of planks into a doghouse, congratulations, you're a woodworker. Right. And if you enjoyed it, or your dog enjoys it, then maybe you make a better dog house or you move on up to a, a, a horse house or a, a cow house and eventually a, a person house. Um, and then you find a mate and then you have children and you teach them to sand. <laughs> and you're off to and the races. Hakuna Matata, you're part of the circle right. of life. Okay. <laughs> well, we very much appreciate the tour of the Offerman Woodshop um, and your words of wisdom and getting people into the trade. My pleasure.